Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about some brand new products from Revlon. A few weeks ago when my best friend came to visit, we were perusing the drugstore makeup aisles like we always do, and we started seeing several displays for new products from Revlon that we had never seen before, like these eyeshadow quads and this new blot powder and a gripping primer. And then lo and behold, Revlon sent me two PR packages, one filled with 12 of their new concealers and the other filled with 10 of the matte lip crayons. So I've been using all of these products, testing them out over the last couple of weeks. So I'm gonna share some thoughts. I'm gonna show a demo of me applying all of those products to my face today, as well as lip and hand swatches of the 10 shades of these matte lip crayons. And then I'll finish out this video with my final thoughts. Now, just up front, this video is not sponsored. I was under no obligation to do this video for Revlon, but there are some great things here and I really want to share them with you. So as we jump into this video, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. All right, we're going to start off with the first product that my best friend and I saw on the shelves and we were like, wait, what is that? And it was this eyeshadow quad. Of course, it was in the pink colors, the pink tones that you know I love. So that was the immediate attention grabber for me. So I bought it, took it home and used it the next day and went back and bought two more shades because I was blown away with the quality of these shadows. The mattes and the shimmers both are super pigmented. Now each quad has a different number of mattes and shimmers. So as I go through these, I'll show you swatches on the screen and you'll be able to tell. This first palette is 565 and it's called Pretty because it is so pretty. This one only has one matte shade. And then the shimmers, they vary in texture. This one up here at the top is one that I like to use a little more as like a topper. And then these two have a little more of a, um, more of a metallic finish to them, but they're super smooth, super soft. And then the matte, even though it is this bright fuchsia color, which is hard to do and not have it feel gritty, this is super smooth and pigmented. And in a moment, I'm gonna show you these shades going on my eyes. The next palette I picked up is number 560, and this is Stylish. And this one has three mattes and just one shimmer. And this shimmer is super smooth and pigmented. Oh my goodness. And then these three matte shades, all of them super buttery, nice neutral colors. I've done a look with just this palette, really enjoyed it. And then the third palette I picked up was number 575 and it's exquisite. Now I picked this up mostly for this shade because I knew that I would love to be able to combine that plum shade with the pinks in here, but I wasn't too sure about the rest of the tones in this palette, if I'm being honest. And I almost thought I regretted buying it. And then I made myself use this whole palette one day. And when I put this color on my eyes, I was like, Okay, nope, this is a great palette. It's definitely a keeper. So if you like more cooler tone plums, you're definitely gonna love this palette, but it also mixes well with the other three. Speaking of which, I'm gonna jump into the demo of me applying these shades on my eyes today. And because I wanted to show you shades from each palette, that's why I mixed it up. But you can get almost a complete look with each of these palettes. So let's go ahead and jump into the eye look today and I'll share with you what shades I used from which palette. So to begin with though, I needed a brow bone highlight shade. So I just pulled out a Makeup Geek shadow, put that under the brow bone with my E50 from Sigma. And then I started off with the lighter peachy shade from the Stylish palette and put that on an M4, M504 from Morphe. Put that all through the crease and you can see it built up nicely, it blended easily, but then I wanted to add just a little bit more pink tones. So I went into the matte pink shade from the Pretty palette 
and a Morphe M433 and just put that deeper into the crease and those two shades just blend well. Now this pink shade can be built up and be quite pigmented if you want to. Next, I decided to go in with a flat shader brush. This is the BK Beauty 203, and I packed on the dark matte plum from the Exquisite palette, and I love this shade. It is so pretty, and you can see you can get a good amount of pigment. And then I just went a really lightly around the edge with the M433 with no additional product just to blend the edges of that dark shade, but I wanted to keep the pigment there. For the lid, I went back to the pink palette as probably most of you guessed I would because those are my favorite shimmers. And so I started off with the kind of mid-tone pink shade and first applied it with my finger so you can see it dry. And it does provide pretty good pigment, but I decided to go ahead and apply it with a damp brush as well, just to show you what the difference is. So I went in with the E60 from Sigma and coated both sides of the brushes with that shadow and then spritzed it with a setting spray. And you can see it did smooth out and just amp up the color and the pigmentation a little bit. Then before that was completely dry, I went in with the brightest shade in that same quad and just tapped that lightly over. And that shade just has a touch of little bits of some shimmer in it and it just looked so pretty. Then I decided to finish off with a deep plum liner and I used that on the lower lash line first because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do on the upper lash line. So did that, topped that with the dark plum shade and then topped it with the two shades we had in the crease. And then I decided to go ahead and use that plum liner on my upper lash line as well. So I applied the liner first and then went in with the BK Beauty 204 brush and more of that dark matte plum and tap that over and you can see what a beautiful look this created. So those shadows, as you can tell, they applied really well. They give you a beautiful finish. Now I forgot to mention, I always start off with an eyeshadow primer, but by doing so, these shadows have lasted on me all day long. They did not fade. They didn't kind of melt off. They didn't become muddy through the day. And again, I have used all three of these kind of on their own and then mixed. And I feel like they have all performed quite well. Now there are a couple of more color options. So if these aren't ones that you're interested in, there are more options available. And in fact, I believe there is one that's solely all matte shadows as well. So the price point on these ranges between eight and $10 depending on where you get it. Target and Walmart are of course going to be your cheapest places to find it, but you will be able to find them at CVS, Walgreens, and I believe Ulta as well. So overall, I highly, highly recommend the eyeshadow quads. I feel like for a long time, Revlon's collection has been missing really good eyeshadows and I think they have finally remedied that situation. All right, the next product we're gonna talk about is concealer. As most of you know, I'm 45, I do have fine lines under my eyes, and I have dry under eyes. So I really struggle with most concealer formulations. There are only a few that work for me, and really honestly, I've struggled to find a great one at the drugstore. So I pulled out the pamphlet that came with the 12 shades that they sent me, and this is what it says. So this was the first intriguing thing. It says it is a five-in-one concealer. It works five ways to erase, perfect, brighten, hydrate, and refresh, infused with vitamin C to help brighten skin and caffeine to awaken your look. Flexible wear moves with your skin so there's no settle, no cake, no flake. We like that. An antibacterial sponge tip targets application for natural buildable coverage while preventing bacteria buildup. Free from added parabens, phthalates, mineral oil, and fragrance. Plus, it's transfer proof and life proof in 19 natural finish shades, including a universal neutralizer and a universal brightener. So in the 12 shades that Revlon sent me, they did send me that 001 universal neutralizer. 
but I didn't realize it until today. So previously, as I had been testing this concealer out, I had been using it with various color correctors underneath first because I realized this is more of a medium coverage concealer. So I felt like when I applied it all by itself, it didn't have quite enough concealing power for me. So I've been using it previously with several different color correctors and I felt like it worked well. Well today, as I was pulling out, sorting all the colors, I saw I had received the 001 Universal Neutralizer shade. So we're gonna start there with the application of that shade. And this was my first use of it. So you can see the sponge tip applicator. It is smaller in size and I think it's perfect. It fits so well into the inner corner of the eye and underneath. This formulation just glides on the skin. It does feel really nice. And as I applied this neutralizer, I did not start off with any other color corrector. And I was shocked what a great job this did at neutralizing the darkness just all on its own. You can blend it in with your fingers or a brush. I started off with my fingers. I'll show you a brush with the concealer in a moment. So then after applying that, I decided to go ahead and put on just a touch of a regular concealer color. So I went in with the shade 025, which is light beige. And this has been kind of my go-to color. This goes on. I just added a little bit more and then I used the Real Techniques Instapop brush to lightly feather that in. So after blending that in, you can see it really did a pretty good job of concealing the darkness, but more importantly, it didn't emphasize my fine lines under the eye. Now I do go in later with a setting powder, one of my normal under eye setting powders, and that's just what I always do with all concealers. So I didn't want to treat this any differently, but I have to say I have been shocked at how well this has worn throughout the day. My under eyes don't get dry looking and I feel like the coverage, while still not being quite as full of coverage as I prefer, I feel like the coverage stays there through the day. So you don't feel like your under eyes are getting darker and darker. So I love that they put great ingredients in this concealer but also gave us a formulation that actually just works. So this has been a huge surprise, love, and I actually would highly recommend this. Now, another way that I have used these concealers because they sent me a wide range of colors, you can use dark concealers to do cream contour. So I'm gonna show you doing that today. I started off with the lighter shade I've been using, it's 070, and I just put a little bit in the contours of my cheeks, and then I used the BK Beauty 107 brush, and I lightly feather that up. Now, this concealer, it does set down pretty well and pretty quickly. So if you're using this to contour, you're going to want to do it in sections on your face. Don't swipe it all over and then go back and blend it. Blend as you go because it does set pretty quickly, but you can see it just creates just such a nice shadow under the cheeks and along the bridge of the nose. And then I did go ahead and use the darker shade, which is 075, kind of around my hairline. I do love the tone of 075 a little bit better. It's a little cooler, but it is pretty deep. And then I did also use that under the jaw and blended that in and you can see it just came together and it just looks very seamless. But the thing about using a concealer to contour is it's gonna give you a little extra coverage. So if you're like me and you may have maybe a little bit of scarring on your cheeks from old acne scars, or if you have a lot of redness um, on your nose or on your cheeks, if you're using a concealer there, it's gonna add just a little bit of extra coverage, which I feel like actually looks beautiful. So overall, the concealers are another product that I would highly recommend. Now, of course, we can't have everything work perfectly for us, right? That would be too much to ask. So the next product I'm gonna talk about, and I forgot to put this on today. I was gonna put it on just to show you, but this is the Grip 16 Hour Matte Primer, and it says it's Superfood Detox Blend. 
So what I'm loving about these new products from Revlon is it seems like they're putting some really good ingredients in their products. So I do love that. But that aside, I was curious because I've been trying some other grip primers. And so that word grip, you know, that's kind of like the buzzword now among a lot of primers. But this one, it is just basically clear and it is not very silicone feeling at first and it easily blends into the skin. And once it's blended in, you can see a slight matte finish and it's the skin looks slightly perfected. So I've used this several times under different foundations and overall my findings are it's okay. So it's blurring properties. It was only slightly blurring in my pore area, but it did provide a little bit of blurring, a little bit of mattification. My foundation went on smoothly over it. I've tried a couple of different formulations. They all went on fine. But as the day went on, the only difference that I saw when I applied half of, I applied it to half of my face and then did no primer on the other, the only difference I noticed was that there was a, just a slight difference in the amount of shine on one side to the other. And I mean, very slight difference, but I felt like my pores looked the same on both sides. So it does provide a little extra help in the mattification realm, but not enough in my frame of thinking to warrant purchasing and having and using it every day. So it's not a bad product, but it was not a win for me. But now let's go on to another product that I am actually really enjoying, and that is the Blot Matte Setting Powder. And you can see in the jar here, it has a slight bit of color to it. And I'll show you in a moment that that actually does add a hint of color to your cheeks as you apply it. So I'll show you application one half of my face you can see. But this does have a really nice package design. Thank you Revlon for making this a great, easy travel friendly loose powder. It has a locking lid here. I love these because then you can dump it into the large lid. And then when you're done, it does have a close, a click close there and you're not gonna get loose powder everywhere. As you see me applying this to my face, I'm gonna show you half of my face application. I'm using the ColourPop Powder Puff to apply it. And as you see it going on, you can see that immediate blurring effect that it has on the skin. It makes the skin look super perfected. I do love the overall finish that it gives to the skin. I don't like this under the eyes per se because I do feel like it's maybe a little too mattifying for me, but on the rest of my face, I've enjoyed it. But as you can see, as I've done half of my face, it does darken your skin just a little bit. It darken, I've used it over several different foundations and it, it does the same for all of them. So I'm guessing because it's not a white, completely translucent powder, it does add just that hint of color. So if you're super fair, this might actually make your skin too dark. But everybody else from really basically light on up to deeper skin tones would, I think this would work great for you. But as far as performance goes, this is such a unique formulation because after hours of having it on my skin without any touch-ups, I may have like a little bit of glow, like you can even see right there. But as I touch my skin, all I feel is a soft powdery finish. It is amazing. I actually don't have another powder like this that once it's been on the skin for hours that I don't have any oily feel on the surface of my skin. And yet the skin doesn't look dry. It doesn't look cakey. It's a really impressive powder. So I would highly recommend it as a setting powder because it does add that little extra, kind of little bit of maybe some coverage or color. I wouldn't recommend it to blot with throughout the day because that might get you a little cakey 
but as a setting powder, I think this is fabulous. All right, the last product we have to talk about is the matte light crayon. Now, before I received these, I had already myself purchased this deep shade called Lifted. So in the PR package that Revlon sent, they sent a coloring book and some crayons and they sent the lip colors in this box that is kind of like a crayon box. Isn't that just so cute? This is my kind of crayon box, right? But I now I love a good lip crayon because I think they're super easy to just throw in your purse. You don't need a sharpener in order to get more product. These are just a twist up, but they do have a built-in sharpener on the other end so that you can make that tip nice and precise so that you can use these to line the lips before you fill them in. Now, as far as the claims on this product, it says in the little pamphlet that they sent, that they are easy to use matte lip color that feels barely there. The full coverage formula is infused with mango seed oil for a feather light texture that feels 30% lighter than ordinary lipstick. The ultra precise tip makes applying easy and fun. And they come in 12 shades, they sent me 10, but I feel like the shade range is so good. So let's go ahead and go into the swatches. So the very first shade that I'm gonna show you is Tread Lightly. This is the lightest shade. It is a light peachy nude color. So it has a little hint of warmth, but it is overall neutral. This glides on easily. It is one that I personally prefer with a lip liner, but I'm not gonna show you any of these with a lip liner as I swatch them. And this is a great neutral shade. The second shade is Clear the Air, and this one, I feel like it does have a little more brown, but I feel like the undertone is pretty neutral. Slight hint of warmth, but a little more neutral. And this is a shade that I do like on its own, but it's one that you'll see me pull in later to help kind of tone down brighter colors. The third shade that I have is Take Flight. This is one of my favorites because it has that hint of pink. It's a cooler pink neutral, so it definitely has pink in it, but there's a hint of some brown that I think just makes it very workable and wearable. Again, this is one that I prefer also bringing in a lip liner with just to help kind of sharpen it up. Next up, we have this insanely bright pink shade. I, this is the only place you're gonna see me wear this color. It's Lift Off and this is like fluorescent pink. If there was ever a fluorescent pink lipstick, this is it. This is not my color, but I think this could look fabulous on deeper skin tones or even super fair. If you have fair skin and you love the blue tone pinks, I mean, this would be a very fun summer shade. Just not one I'm personally gonna be wearing out, especially all by itself, maybe mixed with something else. Next though is a slightly more muted version. And this is more my cup of tea, a little more my comfort zone. It's called Mile High. And this one has just a hint of maybe more of a plumish tone, plum tone to that pink. So it's still vibrant, but there's just a hint of some neutrality that makes it work. And you're gonna see me use this mixed with another shade later. Next up, we have the shade She's Fly. And I actually think this is one of those shades that's gonna be really nice and wearable. It, it does have definite orange tones, but it still has some neutrality. There's a little bit of brown mixed in there, and this is the only kind of orange that I'm really comfortable wearing, but I actually am surprised how much I like this color, and you might actually end up seeing this color up here more often through the summer and into the fall. Next up, we have another one of those really bright shades. This is the shade Ruffled Feathers. Now, what I love about this collection is there is basically a red for every preference in this line. So this is going to be your yellow-based bright red. So if that sounds like your kind of red, you're gonna love this shade. 
It is super bright. Now I feel like these bright shades, unless you keep a sharp tip on these crayons, you're going to need to pull in a liner. Surprisingly, it didn't really make my teeth look as yellow as I thought it would, but a bright, bright shade. So if you're into bright red, that is the shade for you. Next up, we have the shade Air Kiss, and this is a beautiful, beautiful red shade. This is right in the middle. There's a little hint of some blue tones, a little hint of warmth. It's a neutral red. So, so pretty. And I feel like this one does not make your teeth look yellow either. This is actually a red that I would prefer wearing. So love this shade. Next is the shade Lifted, and this is the one that I originally personally purchased, and this shade is so pretty. It's pretty dark, but it is a beautiful deep cherry red, and I really think it's beautiful. Now, it's not something I'm going to wear through the summer. This is definitely, for me, a wintertime shade, but I think it is lovely. And you'll see as I apply this one and the next, I do rub my lips together and then add just a little bit more because the first application, it looks a little streaky through the center. But by going back and adding more, it smoothed out the color and it looked nice and even on the lips. And the last shade is On Cloud Wine, cute name super deep grape color. I don't have another shade even close to this, but it is so pretty. And again, a shade that I feel like you could mix with maybe the lighter pink shade, Take Flight, and you could really come up with a really beautiful deep plum shade. So this is really pretty. Again, not something that I probably will be wearing very often, but maybe mixed with something else. But this is one that definitely makes the teeth look super bright white. Now for the lip combination that I ended up wearing today, I went in with the Revlon Colorstay Longwear Lip Liner. These, by the way, are really good. I chose just to go in with a neutral shade mauve, went around the lips with that. And then I started off with the brighter pink shade uh, called Mile High, not the fluorescent one, but Mile High and just put on a little bit of that and then went over the top of it with that second shade, Clear the Air. And I have worn this combination before and I just love the kind of rosy brown color that those two combined make. As far as the claims and the overall wear time with these, I would say they do feel nice and light on the lips. So I think that claim is accurate. They are long wearing to a certain point. By that, I mean, I've heard somebody say they are all day wear. No, they are not, even if you're not eating. But especially if you eat and drink at all, you're gonna have wear down, especially in the center of the lip. Now, the brighter, deeper shades, these definitely have a little more staying power, ironically, because they do slightly stain the lips, but not a whole lot. But I think just because there's so much color to start off with, that as it wears down, you still have quite a bit of color. But the couple of tests that I've done with this, first of all, I used the neutral shades with a lip liner, went to lunch. I was real careful about just you know, tapping my lips when I was wiping my mouth as I was eating. I didn't do any big swipes. And when I got in the car, my lip liner was still there, but none of the color was left on my lips. And then the next test I did with the combination that I'm actually wearing today, and I went over to our clubhouse to play piano, so I was not eating at all. I was drinking a couple sips out of a water bottle, but after two hours, I still had quite a bit of wear down in the center of my lips. So, they aren't transfer proof and they aren't going to last all day, but you can easily apply just a little bit more. They don't wear away too crazy. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is how they make your lips feel. So they do feel lightweight going on the lips and they don't make your lips like shrivel up and look like raisins as the day goes on, as you're wearing them, you know, like a liquid lipstick would do. 
but my lips start feeling dry after a couple of hours wearing them. So I don't feel like these are super nourishing or moisturizing, but that's pretty typical of most matte lipsticks. So if you have super dry lips, you're definitely going to want to hydrate your lips well, and you might just want to tap on a little bit of some gloss in the center as the day goes on if your lips start feeling a little bit dry. But overall, they are long wearing and they are beautiful colors. They do have a wonderful scent. It is like a sweet cookie, a sweet bakery item, like just like a vanilla cake scent. It's not overpowering. And in fact, after the application, I don't smell it at all, but it's a wonderful, just light fragrance that they put in there. So overall, I have been very impressed with everything that I've tried so far, except for maybe this primer, but everything else, super impressed. I will leave a list and links to everything I talked about in the description box below this video. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up on your way out and I'll see you next time. Bye.